Barrison the Bold, they call me to my face. I know what they say behind my back. Barristan the Old. And it's true. I am old, with hair as white as all the winters I've seen. The older a man grows, the less sleep he needs. These days, I barely sleep at all. When darkness falls over this strange city, I find myself visited by the faces of the kings I have served, the faces of those I swore to protect, the faces of those I failed. All I ever wanted was to live a life of honor, defending a king worthy of service. During the War of the Ninepenny Kings, I sought out Malus the Monstrous, last of the Blackfire Pretenders who had started this whole war. Malus believed that his Targaryen blood gave him a claim to the Iron Throne. I made sure his blood claimed nothing more than the dirt around his corpse. To show his gratitude, the king elevated me to his king's guard. It was the proudest moment of my life. But that king died, and I wasn't with him. Not that I could have saved him if I had been, but still, I vowed to do better with his son, the young prince Ares. For 20 years, his reign was peaceful and prosperous. Ares was well-loved by his subjects and respected by his lords. But as years went on, Ares' temper soured. He became obsessed with dragons and fire, and the swords of the king's guard couldn't defend him from the enemies he saw lurking in every shadow. My king went mad. But there was hope. His son and heir. Prince Rhaegar was everything a kingdom could hope for in a ruler. He was strong, but gentle, wise, and cautious, and a good friend. No matter the wounds Ares dug into the realm, we had faith that his son would sew it back together again when he ascended the throne. Then came Lord Wendt's tourney at Harrenhal, the largest ever in Westeros. I unhorsed every man against me until only Prince Rhaegar remained. We each set our feet in our saddles and lowered our lances and charged. And I fell. Muddy and bruised, I then watched Rhaegar present Lyanna Stark with the victor's crown of roses, though she was betrothed to Robert Baratheon. And Rhaegar himself was married to Elia Martell. We all know what happened after. If I'd been a bit quicker with my lance, if I'd chosen a faster horse, perhaps I could have spared the kingdom from the destruction that came after. Or if I'd thought to warn Brandon Stark against his rashness, he came to King's Landing himself, demanding Rhaegar return his sister. Poor fool. If he'd only known the depth of Ares' madness, he wouldn't have dared provoke him. Ares ordered Brandon imprisoned, and I could do nothing but obey. When Brandon's father, Lord Rickard Stark, came to King's Landing to beg for his son, Ares burned him alive, and I could do nothing but watch. I had sworn a vow to a mad king and was honor-bound to obey him, even at the cost of my soul. Ravens soon arrived with dark news for the king. The Vale was in open revolt. Demanding Lyanna Stark's return, Robert Baratheon was smashing any army that dared face him. Eddard Stark, Brandon's younger brother, was marching the whole of the north down the neck and had taken Catelyn Tully, Brandon's betrothed, for his own, thus winning the support of the Riverlands. The king sent ravens to Casterly Rock to beg his former hand, Tywin Lannister, for help. And no ravens returned. A plan was devised. Prince Rhaegar would personally lead the royal forces, now reinforced with 10,000 Dornishmen, north to face Robert. Of the king's guard, Lewin Martell and I would ride with the prince. Before we left, the prince confided in me that when he returned from this battle, there would be a great many changes in court. Despite my vows to the king, I confess I was excited. On the march to face Robert's army, we were sure we'd win. We had superior numbers, and we had Prince Rhaegar. His presence lifted the spirits of our men, and he looked every inch the king he was destined to become. But at the Trident, the gods played a cruel joke. Robert proved the Baratheon words as his army smashed through our lines. Lewin Martell was killed. I fell in combat, badly wounded, and could do nothing but watch as Robert's Warhammer ended Rhaegar's glorious reign before it began. And the kingdom that would never be 
washed away down the trident with his life blood. But Robert spared me, insisting his personal maester tend to my wounds, out of respect. But respect for what? A king's guard shouldn't survive one king, let alone two, and one who should have been. I swore an oath to House Targaryen, and I failed them. All that's left of their fire is a single ember halfway across the world, surrounded by darkness. If the gods were good, I would still be young in the fullness of strength. But whatever the cost, I will not let this ember go out. This time, I will not fail.